a very warm welcome back to Italia Demo for episode 11 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's late and we're back on Italia Demo. Um, it's been a while. I, I was away with. I'm just. This is just to explain a bit. I'm doing a contract uh, to help out a local neighbour. This is not my gear. Um, it is late, and I've got field info on. I don't remember putting that on. Uh, but we are doing this for Gio Giorgia Leone. Um, she, corn harvest did he do? So we're helping out. We're using their equipment. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do in the morning. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous episode, like I said, it depends when you how you're watching these. If you're watching these as a run of videos after the Let's Play is completed, uh, then you'll, there'll be no gap for you. If you're watching as I'm putting them up, big gap. Uh, in the morning, yeah, we've got a load of work to do, but it's not going to be um, subscriber contract related in a way um, because we've got a load of prep work and field work to do. I'm going to be replacing and upgrading some gear, selling some bits I'm not using, just replacing some things. We're going to get a new planter. We are going to need a plough because our plough went missing. We assume, yeah, <clears throat> nefarious behaviour was involved, but we don't know for definite. It may have been me that mislaid it. You know how these things go. The horses um, are all exercised for today. So in the morning, obviously, they're going to need sorting out. Uh, this will continue. And then you'll get a, there'll be a little picture will come up showing the contract. So we should have some corn left over from this. I do have a corn contract, but it's for organic corn. And I can't guarantee that this is organic. So this will just go into the coffers, so to speak. And uh, we'll kind of go from there, really. Um... Trying to think what else I was going to say. Oh, yeah, about the long gap. Um, I was, uh, well, I went away with Mississippi P for our wedding anniversary or on Thursday last week. Uh, and we got up Thursday, which was our anniversary. We drove to the Lake District, fair old drive from where we live. Um, I had a bit of a tickle in my throat, feeling a little bit sore, you know. Thursday was fine. Went out for dinner Thursday night. My eldest daughter came with us. As often we take various children, come to Lake District. We always offer, and some come, some don't. Um, Celie G couldn't come. She was at university, so she wasn't able to come this time. But my eldest daughter had booked some time off, so she came with us. Went out for a lovely meal, which my kids all paid for for our anniversary, which was lovely. Woke up Friday. Whoa, did I not feel good. Um, horrendous sore throat. Chest was closing up. Um, now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm, I, I'm asthmatic. I've been asthmatic since I was seven. Um, it's been an ongoing thing in my life. Uh, and it got worse and worse and worse till late Friday night, early hours of Saturday morning, I had a full-blown asthma attack. I mean, like, at the point where we were going to call an ambulance. It was horrendous. So, put a bit of a, put a, bit of a dampener on our um, a few days away. We still did a few things. I just wasn't able to walk very far without wheezing and need my inhaler way more than I should be taking it. Uh, so when we got back, I had two or three days. I mean, my temperature was through the roof. Straight away, you think, oh no, it's the you know, it's it's that word that you know, and it wasn't. We did tests. My wife did. I did. My eldest has to for work as well. So it's not that. Just a uh, you know. The problem with me, if I get any kind of chest infection, throat infection, you know, I, I always have upper or respiratory airway infection is what I often get, which I think was what happened. So, yeah, a few days resting. Uh, I suppose I was resting. Yeah, all good fun, um, but I'm, I'm kind of back now. I did a couple of videos yesterday, um, just shortish ones, a, a map tour, and I did the fact sheets from last week. But I'm still finding, really struggling to breathe. So when I start kind of getting going, I'm having to stop quite a lot. Or, you know, like yesterday I did a bit and thought, I, I, I'm going to have to stop, I'm going to have to take a break. Um, so anyway, yeah, all, all that kind of happened. Um, oh, yeah, I meant to say, the, the, the um, contracts that we did. Um, for, on 18 and 19... What did we actually end up with? Because the money has gone up. So on 18 and 19, uh, we had, in the end, 
all those bales that I did, with, it was amazing, 349 bales. When I said we broke the bale limit, you know, using that bit of machinery, we absolutely did, because we've got a load of bales sitting there already over at the farm. 349 bales. The total profit selling all those bales um, over at the train station, uh, the train station, the biogas plant, was 743,852. We got 20% of that. That was the deal. We got 20%. So we got 148,770 of that deal. So we were on uh, just over a hundred. No. What were we on? Can't remember now. Um, but at least with that being said obviously we've got the um, greenhouse project going we've got the olive trees going as well they're bringing in a little bit of hourly income too so we're up to 292,000 so things are going pretty well financially i did get a message um well thank you for all the people that have uh, <laughs> that have sent in fines because when i was going in out the biogas plant i haven't been going in and out the correct way and i've been going yeah I haven't been observing the signs. I don't speak Italian. That's what it is. Um, so, yeah, thank you to all the for, to people that sent fines in. But I also got this message, and this was an interesting one. Dear Mr. City P, I am from the Ministry of Agricultural, Food and Forestry Policies. After seeing your vlog on, the YouTube, on YouTube, we would like to arrange a visit with you to take samples from your feed, grass, water and animals to try and get to the bottom of why you have floating cows. Could you please get in touch with your earliest convenience to arrange this? Thank you very much. Yours sincerely, Mr. T. Ferrari, Ministry of Agricultural Food and Forestry Policies. Uh, yeah, we have helium cows up on the hill. So, um, yeah, we've got to have someone come out and they're going to take some samples and <laughs> try and ascertain why our cows are floating. I don't know. So, anyway, this will get done. Uh, in the morning, I will see you. We'll change a load of gear over. And um, I need to get field 18 and 19 prepped because part of that contract was that. Actually, hang on a second. Sorry, mild coughing fit. Um, yeah, the contract we had from Bright Farmer was that I did. I can't remember. I'm really sorry. I can't remember if I read it all out or not. Um, but it does say thank you uh, for sending me the revenues of this massive silage harvest and for returning my machinery back. It was in perfect state, crisp and clean. However, in the meantime, I have now cured from the terrible illness that has kept the world in its firm grip. Sadly, I have recently been banished to Brazil. Reason being, I visited the mayor's office with a fa without a face mask on. He is a close cousin of the former Prime Minister, Silvio Berlusconi. <laughs> a bit careless of me. Politicians in Italy are not the easiest of kinds. Um, as a token of my endless gratitude, I'm offering you my fields completely for free. Take care of them and enjoy the great soil composition of this rich land. Should you ever visit Brazil, I would appreciate a visit of yours, but finding me will definitely not be uh, easy. It is a, quite a wilderness out here. Um, the region is known under the name Pioneros. Wish me luck. That's from Bright Farmer. And I did mention stewardship, and I can't remember if I read, the, read that out in full or kind of just bullet pointed it. But um, yeah, so 18 and 19, we are now looking after. I don't own them, they still belong to Bright Farmer, but we are going to take on stewardship of these fields, um, so they need all the prep work doing. So that's that's where we're at. Um, I think I might buy another one of those cultivators, you know, the ones we're using for the organic work. So we, we um, fertilise at the same time using the Cambridge roller. I mean, two of those running on fields that size, which it also means now we've got access to those and all the fields we've now got 10, 11, 12, 10, 11, 12, and 13, plus our field one, we can take on a couple of the, I've got some fairly large contracts requiring quite some amounts of gear. So yeah, potentially we can take on some of those. Anyway, I will see you in the morning. I've rambled enough to, to start off with. Let's get some work done. I realise this has all been in the dark and I, I apologise. I, I thought I'd just do a brief intro. You know what I'm like. Brief, okay. That's not me, is it? Let's be honest.
it's a little bit past quarter past seven in the morning i'm at the store as you can see the money's gone up those like i say the greenhouses and the olive trees down the green no not the greenhouses the olive trees some of that money i got i get some is it half i can't remember what the contract was now um for looking after them maybe it wasn't i oh, wasn't anyway some of that money's got to go back to the olive grove yeah owners but uh, anyway we're at the store and we've got stuff to get rid of I'm getting rid of the Adirond C. I got it initially because it was kind of, you could change its configuration and I could use it for bales, I could use it for transporting crops and then a bale trailer and that kind of thing. The problem is I've got my lorry with its trailer, which is 45,000 litres. This is a auto load bale trailer is fine, apart from the fact that when you are auto unload, you can't drop them down to the floor. It drops from here and it's really untidy um, so I'm getting rid of that the herbicide sprayer fertilizer sprayer I kept initially to do herbiciding but I'm doing a lot of organic stuff and in all honesty I might as well just continue I'll do organically and then weed in the first stage I could use that for doing herbicide contracts but I'm not going to. Um, as far as just yeah, as far as the planter goes, that's three meter. I'm going to go for a six meter, which we'll see momentarily. I don't even use that yet. Um, and then the the weeder that I just bought, I'm going to go for a larger weeder. I think that's all of it. So let's get rid of that first. I hope I've got enough. Oh, I mean I have got enough money from the contracts. Sell that. Uh, then we need to yeah, let's get rid of some of these bits then. So if we, oh, I haven't got a front three point link on this, have I? I suppose that's something I should think about doing, you know. Uh, that might make life a little bit easier, mightn't it? I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't used it yet, but I suppose I could do. I do enjoy doing a bit of spraying. It, it, it's not something I do very often. So when you do get to do it, it makes a nice change. I might have a look around for a smaller or, or a, a cheaper alternative, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Oh no, hang on. Whoa. Oh, nearly sold my tractor. That wouldn't have gone down well. Let's try that again, shall we? There we go. Sell that. Uh, I'm going to have to re replace the plough as well, because we've got ploughing that's going to be doing so. We'll get on that as well. Now I'm going to buy a front seed tank. Well, seed or fertiliser tank. Primarily because the planter I'm getting will benefit from it. Now I used this planter, not this one I'm getting rid of, but the planter I'm going to be buying on... Was it Homeworker? Again, I'm really sorry because I, because I haven't... Because you know, I've been out of action for a little bit. Before I went away, I had a few people send me messages, which usually I screenshot immediately, and um, then I've, I've got a kind of note of who sent me what messages. Uh, and sometimes I just plum forget, and I'm, I'm terribly sorry. But the person that suggested it, um, if it was you, I apologise. <laughs> um, but as soon as I read the message, I thought, oh, that's a brilliant idea. I've looked at all different alternatives and there are quite a few available again I'm not doing big farming on here so I was looking at a lot of the John Deere planters that came out recently but they're massive and you know I they're just not going to fit on here so uh, right let's get rid of that now comes the interesting bit so I will see you in a moment what we're we up to 397,000 we've got more than enough to buy the bits we need to buy right then what did I get? Well, I bought a second one of the KZK604 fertilizer, Cambridge roller cultivator. I think that was the right one. I've gone for the RYC uh, one six meter. Again, there's the what the Weber six. Well, what used to be the Weber six M. Um, it's just more expensive. I mean, there's not really a lot of difference in them. They fold up six meters wide. That'll do the job. Uh, I've gone for the Flegel Autolo Bale Trailer. That has straps on as well, so you can strap other stuff down as well. 
Um, I have gone for this. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in just a moment. Um, but I've gone for the 15.2 meter. That only requires 120 horsepower, which I've more than got with my Fiat. So it's going to make the weeding process so much quicker and easier. I'm just thinking, did I, have I forgotten something? No, replaced the sprayer with the weeder. I had a weeder, so I've got a larger weeder. New planter, got that. Bell trailer, yes. I needed a plow, and I'm going to get a second one of those. So technically now when I'm cultivating and doing my organic fertilising layer, I can now, I've got two of those at six metres, so I can do 12 metres uh, a go. So that makes sense. I'm sure that should make sense, shouldn't it? Um, right, as far as the planter goes, I'm going to show you that one. Descriptions for these will be, no, yeah, details of these will be in the description for the video. Again, if I remember to do it for this video, because I keep forgetting. Now, these you'll find under, once installed, under cedars. And it comes as this pack, the Horsch SW3500S. Now, that is a seed tender for all intents and purposes. Requires 140 horsepower, um, six metres wide. I think, to, I think it cultivates as well. Um, 5,000 litre tank. Now, these two attachments go on the back. Now, as you can see, the cedar doesn't have its own capacity, so you need something with that, which is that attaches onto that. If we have a quick look at it, when you swing round, it's got a three-point link on it, so you can attach onto it. Now, there are other things that this, this will attach to. The planter itself has a 500-litre capacity and a three-point link. So, with a front seed tank, taking me out to, what's that going to be, 2,700 litres with the 2,200 litre front seed tank, I've got a six metre planter there. Now that only cost 25 grand for a six metre, which is cheap as chips and brilliant. So I don't have to have it with that. I'm pretty sure it would even work with, where is it? The Supima fertiliser trailer, because that can take seed as well. And that has a three point link on the back. You could probably run it with that too. It's not a bad combination. It would give you some really good options. Now, the other thing I did look at was a broadcast sp uh, spreader because we've also got the Eurospan pack. Where are those? So we've got those. I could have gone for a broadcast one. Now, I'm pretty sure these did all crops, didn't they? Or am I imagining that? But that one can go out to 36 metres, I think it is. I thought about a broadcast one, but then I thought, you know what? No, I'm going to go with a six metre. Keep it, keep it real, people. Keep it real. <laughs> As real as it gets when you're using an auto load trailer. Um, so first job then, I'm going to get the plough out onto field 18, 19. Get that plough in. Um, I'm then going to get the my little massy out here. We'll grab... Actually, no, I don't need to grab it yet because I've got one over at the farm. We'll get the fertilising underway. Because, like I say, I've got some organic contracts, and I've often shied away from organic contracts. I say often, I shy away from them quite a lot. Um, because I always found them a little bit finicky to do. But realistically, in this case, it's not so bad. That looks like a weird, scary spider thing, doesn't it? Look at that. <laughs> Orange spider. Uh, yeah, but if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do it anyway, if I'm gonna use that cultivator and that's gonna give me a fertilizing state, I might as well. And if I've got a bigger weeder, if I'm gonna avoid using chemical fertilizers um, and chemical sprays, I might as well do all of them organic. You know, I know people aren't the people that aren't specifying organic. It would be weird to say if you did a contract and said I specifically don't want organic, that would be odd, wouldn't it? Anyway, so that's what we're going to be looking at. I want to get this prep work done. I might, I might grab the uh, scooter. We're always up to the cow field because I think we have got some milk available. I just want to fill those things up. <laughs> I want to fill those milk bowls up and take some milk. I think that they only take about 200 litres in each one, so we're going to take about 400 litres. It'd be a nice little drive up there on the old scooty. Uh, I think what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to plough the gap between the two fields. I did Amanar about that. I said, oh, I don't know if I will, you know, but I might as well. Let's just make it one massive field, then I can do some big, um, big harvest. Now, with 291 grand left in the bank as well, 
I could probably upgrade my harvester and I've been looking at some Rossell mashes again a few people suggested Rossell mash as an option I've been looking at those and I might well go for a Rossell mash like I said before I want something that's going to be fairly small for getting around the, the roads and the lanes and trackways around around these parts but um, I don't want um, uh, plus I want a fairly large capacity I mean not ridiculously I'm not looking for a sort of 12 13 14 thousand litre capacity maybe an eight or something because I'm pretty sure at the moment we're only a, we're a three something or a four something again my mind's gone completely blank uh, you know what it's pretty easiest way is just to have a look isn't it um, let's check out a harvester uh, yeah 4200 litres so getting something of a similar size but a larger tank capacity I did have a look at the um, I know I've used it before as well I think on Stone Valley the class mega was it I might go for that that goes up to 8000 litre and as I recall it wasn't hugely expensive either maybe we could do that I did like the idea of a Russell mash because I've got I don't know. We'll have a bit of a think. So what I'll do is when I get to this bit here, try and get my line just right. Oh, it doesn't like that at all. Oh, that's L1 and triangle. Let's cut across there. That really doesn't like that. It's obviously some weird angles down in this bottom it's almost like a little ditch like a trough in the bottom and then we can move forward uh, I can like I say I've got a few contracts I think I've got one is for over a hundred thousand litres I think that was with Gypsum's Bakery that was a hundred thousand litres of wheat I've got yeah a few similar sort of capacities or amounts which when I have my smaller fields I could do but it being doing it over m multiple harvests whereas a big old unit of a field like this potentially I could do it in one harvest while still doing the small stuff um, I've, all got, I've got a contract for potatoes which I think I'm going to look at putting some potatoes in on field one which again is kind of ironic, I've just I just put potatoes in on, say just, on Attingham Park. So, what's the beauty of subscriber contracts? You don't know what you're going to get and, you know, it's, it's very Forrest Gump-like. Um, it's life is like a box of chocolates. So, yeah, I'm just going to crack on with the bits I've got. I'm going to get this field prepped. Um, I'm going to start taking some of the bits of machinery back to the farm I need to fill and that's something I need to do is check over at the farm just I don't think I've got any seed left knocking around anywhere oh, what I am going to do here though because I realized this was a bit of a weird angle I am going to need a front three you know the, the front three point front lifter I think it is by Pepe 978 the one that comes on a pallet, I'm going to get one of those because it's suddenly dawned on me. They were saying, me saying, I've got away so far with not needing a front three point link on this. Um, if I'm going to run that planter with a front seed tank, probably going to need a front seed tank. Um, not front seed tank, probably going to need a front three point link if I'm going to do that. Looks tidy this edge up. So one thing that does keep catching me out though is um, these bits here these bits here that hold the posts up when you come right up alongside like too close I keep catching these with things and you know go flying well 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 I think what I might do is take on my second um, horse contract as well. That way I've got a rolling thing. I think it's only for two horses, my other one. 
so I'll have six on the go at a time which is going to take a little while for doing them but it does mean that when the four horses for um, oh, Big Papa C are ready the other ones will already, already be underway I won't be kind of starting from scratch so to speak so I think I might do that I've got quite a lot of wheel slip with this this has got enough horsepower but in certain places yeah, I'm, I'm going sideways now, look. Ooh. Not sure I'm happy about that. Do I need a front weight? Just thinking now, do I get another harvester or should I invest in a slightly larger tractor? Ooh. All these decisions, it's too much pressure. I hired a worker for the ploughing. I've been going backwards and forwards moving bits of equipment. I thought I'd grab the uh, cultivator. Uh, I did get one of the front lifters because I was moving the cedar, the no, not the cedar, the new planter with the box. Ploughing is continuing. It would appear the worker has taken it upon themselves. <coughs> to put the plough on the front. It's not supposed to run backwards, but it does. Um, is this going to work? Looks like it is. Now, technically, if I don't have a direct drill, I can seed or plant onto a ploughed field or a cultivated field. Now, this will give me a cultivated state. Weirdly, I'm not sure why. Um, which I don't just see in the corner there's a little bit of dark blue and as I, if I zoom out you'll see a bit better without even lowering the thing down so I could just go over all of it now but that does seem a bit disingenuous so I think what we'll do we will cultivate it doesn't need cultivating but what we're doing I think in the vein of looking forward towards FS22 where I think they're trying to make a lot of these processes more relevant to the wrong word. I think because you can plough a field and you can see directly onto a ploughed field in FS19. I think with 22, they're trying to make cultivating more meaningful in that you do actually get a better yield if you prepare the seed bed more or better or, you know, and remove the, the rocks and all that kind of thing. You can direct drill, you can just do stubble work, you don't have to cultivate and that kind of thing, but I think they're just trying to make it all, each process more relevant in its own right, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm quite happy to go over the bits that have been ploughed, I'm not going to do the bits that haven't yet. And what we should be seeing is hopefully, we'll be able to see a bit better now, Yep, there we go. We've got a dark line around the edge. Uh, although, oh, so Danny, yeah, because it wasn't actually cultivating, I have got a lighter one there. So I needed to actually cultivate it as well as. Probably have it turned on as well. That's probably a better idea, isn't it? So the processes will continue. You've seen me do this process before. I've, I've ploughed before, of course I have, but this is it's a different farm, different area, different fields. I, am, I have been pricing up and looking at my options for harvesters and for a new tractor. I think I'm going to stick with Italian. I've been looking at Fiat's, I've been looking at um, uh, Lamborghinis. There's a few different Lamborghini ones out there. Uh, I, might, I might go with a Lamborghini, I'm not sure. There are a few different ones available um, in various different packs and things, so I'm, I think I might go Lamborghini. Since we've got the Fiat already, I don't want to go all Fiat. No, I don't have to, you know, I, I could just, I could go with anything. I was looking at getting one of the older case, is it 7620s? Um, not 76, is it 70? 
7200. I was looking to get one of those, the 7200s, because fairly inexpensively, that will go up to 261 horsepower. Now, there are modded versions of that available as well, so I could have. have. Um, yeah, there's that. I mean, obviously, you know as well as I do what tractors and... You know, of course there are lots of manufacturers available. I did a little bit of fiddling around this gateway here because it was ploughed so close up to the gateway that I was catching the fence posts. So I thought, easiest thing to do, just, just do a bit of landscaping work there, just to tidy this. It means I'm going around a little bit and I've lost a tiny little bit of field, but what I lost that tiny little bit of field, I more than made up for in this section here, where I ploughed it out smooth rather than having that kind of step in earlier. So, with this again, I will crack on. I'm hoping before the end of the episode to get that planter up and running. So we'll get some seed in there and let's get something planted in the ground. Now I know I just, actually I, I'm just thinking corn. Yeah, I have, this was a corn field and I've just done a corn harvest, but silaging it, I think I have a corn contract for organic corn, 50,000 liters, which I think I will more than get on this field. I should more than get on this field. So I think we'll just, yeah, we'll, we'll get on with it. I'll keep going. Carry on handsomely. Or in my case, just carry on. And let's get the work done. I'll bring the new bale loading trailer over. I need to remove that tree. That's going to be annoying, isn't it? Maybe we'll need to get the old uh, the devourer out again. I might do it off camera though, I'll just clear that out of the way. I'm not going to have many wood chips, and the wood chips don't pay particularly highly on here, but it will be some wood chips and it will make us a little bit of money. Also means we can get it, that out of the way for any work we've got coming up. Yeah, so what I should have done was gone over this correctly the first time, shouldn't I? Yeah, Plowing on 18 and 19 is done. I've returned the plow back here to the farm and it needs a little bit of TLC. Um, so I thought I'd go and grab the front tank and the planter and come back to the farm. I thought I had, oh no, did I, I think I might have used all of the pallets of, yeah, I think I used all the seed, didn't I? So we've got a couple of options now we can go to the biogas plant and buy some which is more expensive or we can go to the CNS and Marie mm. you know what I think I'll pay full back I deserve to oh money's gone down a bit um, I have bought a new tractor but you won't see that until the next episode because <laughs> I was just fiddling around I thought oh you know what I'll get it so why not oh It would appear we have guests. Where are they? Well, that was interesting. They apparently are a local family. Uh, I have started to get a bit of a reputation around the area, a bit of a name. I think my head has poked above the parapet and I've drawn the attention of some... Um, some people, let's just say that. Uh, I have been offered various services. I have been offered um, protection services. Apparently local farmers can get quite um, territorial. Apparently, I have been offered financial aid in a way that was made to be kind of, I didn't really have an option kind of thing. Um, but not to worry, because they'll be looking out for me. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. I was thinking of borrowing some money from the bank, but I suppose I could... 
Mind you, we've just bought a new tractor. I've got enough to get a harvester, I'm sure I have. If I go for a class maker, I'm sure I've got enough to get that and we should be okay. Um, but now I'm a bit worried if I don't borrow from them, I might be in trouble. Overcoats were mentioned. Um, concrete. I, I, oh, it was all very... Um, I was just a bit nervous. Right. Oh, that's not good. Anyway, let's go and get some seed, shall we? I decided, in order to be fair and balance the books as best I can, I'm going to come up here and buy some at regular prices. Not my usual knockdown prices. No, I wouldn't be doing that if I didn't have much money in the bank. But we should be alright. I think I can get through here. At least coming this way as well. I can avoid all the problems with the uh, Italian road signs. <laughs> and shouldn't then incur any more fines. Now I have to remember which one of these. I still can't remember. I can't remember. They're labelled, aren't they? Yes, they are. Not the best turning circle. Can you get under there? Only just a uh, seed. There's 500, so that's in the back. And then what we'll do is let's switch to. Uh, that one, open that. Let's put the others in there. Fantastic, 2,700 litres. Unfortunately, the, because this doesn't come normally with, with a three-point link on the front, and I've put the front lifter on, as you can see, um, the arms are pretty low. That's fairly low to the ground. It doesn't give me a huge amount of clearance, but again there's not a lot I can do about that um, the tractor I have just purchased though does have a front three point link as standard it does, it does also mean the Massey, we could keep hold of the Massey Ferguson, that was the loaner that we got right at the very start, oh I've got to sort out that plough situation haven't I because that was a loaner too um, from the same farm and my mind has gone blank as it seems to do quite a lot um, hang on sorry about that just a mild coughing fit um, yeah badger set farm that lent us the Massey and it was just till we got, onto our, got on our feet but it did say we could keep it longer if we wanted to so do I run three or that one goes back to Badger's set and we just run two. The new one I've got is a similar horsepower. You know I said the plough only required 120 horsepower. It requires 180. And my other tractor, or this tractor, is 185. So that's why we're struggling to pull it. The new one is 189 horsepower. So not much higher, but it gives us two of similar horsepower. And like I said, having the front three-point link will make life a little bit easier as well. So I just thought, you know what, why not? Now, we are going to put corn back in this one. I know you shouldn't do one same crop after a previous crop. You should rotate a little bit. Um, but I need 50,000 litres. I'm just thinking this, this is going to be way too big, isn't it? That's going to be way more than 50, isn't it? Well, it doesn't matter. Anything spare will just sell. So, let's open this out. Six metres, it's going to take a while. I'll probably have to refill the seed a couple of times, I would imagine. But the beauty with this one... ...is it can seed a bit faster. And by that I mean does that dodgy thing you know I'm pretty sure it happened on Homercra didn't it and it was one of those small idiosyncrasies that came with it which can make life a little bit easier but we now have a six meter cedar and we have a six meter planter we only started off with three meter ones so we have got slightly larger sizes this does seem very bumpy over the ground I'm a bit concerned because these edges like I said we've got a, almost like a trough 
a little ditch where it dips down in, in the corners, the corners, the edges of the fields. Did we miss some there? Yeah, like that. Where we've got this like hollow where it sweeps down and up at the edge of the field. So rather than having just a natural sweep down to the end, we've got this hollow. Um, so what I might have to do is seed those that way, I think. It's just the way it is. I can't do a lot about that either, but I'll, you know. We'll do the best we can. The, yeah, you can see all the bits. It's just around the edges mostly. So I might just have to come in and tackle those separately. And as you can see, the cultivating and organic fertilising is continuing apace. But I'm now thinking that well, I bought the second one because I thought if I'm going to be doing a like, big field like this, but that being said, I'm not running two vehicles doing the fertilising or the cultivating because I was doing one job was ploughing, then it was the fertilising slash cultivating and now the planting. So I'm actually running multiple jobs on the same field rather than the same job. I'm just worried now, actually, am I going to cultivate over that? What I've just done, that would be bad. Right, let me just stop there a second. Wait for the worker. It shouldn't do, because we've got a bit of a gap, but I just I don't want to have any issues. Let's, whoa. <laughs> that came at quite a pace, didn't it? <laughs> I wonder if this is going to need some maintenance. Oh, fuel on the tractor. Look how low that is. When we get to the next pass, I think, it puts us right over there in that corner. Um, that's where the fuel station is, so I think we'll top this up. Even if we're not going to keep it, we need to return it. Fully maintained, cleaned and full of fuel. So if I do another strip that way, it'll just give me a bit of a, a bit of a buffer zone, and then I'll carry on planting uh, the other field first. I think that's probably the best way. I'll run a couple of strips across the middle, and then we'll do it that way. That way, this one can continue doing its thing. Let's get that out of the way. Right, let that carry on from there. Sorry, sorry, old bean. Right, so with that, uh, we've, we've, yeah, we've sold some equipment. Well, we did a harvest last night, uh, an in-game contract. We've sold some equipment. We've bought some new equipment. We've had a visit from the locals. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. Um, we have prepped this field, ploughed, cultivated, fertilised, and now we are planting corn. Does mean... If I am going to buy myself a new harvester, which that is the intention, we are going to need a corn header as well for harvesting this because I won't be silaging it this time. This will be actually a corn harvest. And I also need to plant my field 1 and 10 through 13 um, need to be done as well. I I need to check all my contracts actually to see what other ones I've got. Oh yeah, potatoes. I was going to put in one, wasn't I? I can say that. Um, so potentially, yeah, we'll crack on with that. Loads more to do, loads more to come. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're still enjoying it. If you have, if you are, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching. <laughs>